Hi, this is Maria of Pink Pony Design and today I want to talk to you a bit about presser feet. This is a question I get asked quite a lot uh, from people who bought the same machine as I have, the Juki TL2200 QVP Mini machine, which is the machine I'm sitting in front of right now. And uh, they want to know what extra presser feet I have bought and that I use the most. So I thought we would take a look at them today and I'll tell you how I use them, when I use them and why I use them, hopefully. Anyway, let's start by taking a look at the standard presser foot. And that is this one. Uh, that's the one that comes with your machine. And uh, it is a fairly wide foot. And uh, I actually use it rather little. It's not uh, not one that's commonly on my machine. Uh, I have this same foot in a Teflon version. And uh, uh, that one I use the more, actually. So um, it is uh, rather easy to see uh, where you're going when I'm making my uh, rolled bag handles, for example. I use this to stitch my second stitch line since I can clearly see where my needle is going. And pardon my gardener's nails. Please don't look at them. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, this is called the MT-I or MT-1, I'm not sure. Uh, and this is a really useful foot. Uh, the Teflon feet, you're going to want to invest in at least one if you're going to be sewing vinyl bags or uh, forks leather bags or even cork bags because the normal presser feet will stick on the surface a bit. So. Um, you want something that will glide over the sticky vinyl. And uh, these feet actually glide really nicely, even on like super sticky glitter vinyl. So I'm very happy with them. Anyway, uh, other than this in the uh, Teflon department, I have a number more and I'm gonna get to them in a second. Uh, but first I'm gonna show you the super slim foot that I use quite a lot. It's a very narrow presser foot, which is great when you want to be able to keep uh, press foot pressure on a small area. Um, so this one I use quite often and it's called the P363. And uh, it's, uh, it's one I, I recommend investing in. I have the same one in a Teflon. And unfortunately, since it would get too uh, fragile, you don't have the open view that you'll get on the metal one, which is something I don't like a lot. So this foot is actually used less than I'd like to admit, but sometimes you just cannot beat this one for um, narrow spaces or some top stitching on some bags and such. So I use it, but it's not my most used Teflon foot. Uh, the Teflon version of this one, it's really hard to see what it's called, so I write it down. It is T363. So the super slim Teflon foot is T363, if you're interested. And something I love about all these feet is that they are, um, they have a little feather, allowing them to keep pressure foot pressure even, even when going over humps or seams. So that's something I really appreciate with all of these pressure feet, really. They have that little feather thing going on. Boop, boop, like that. Very cool. I'm very happy. So, uh, a foot that I use a lot, a lot is these. And they are, let's call them a piping foot uh, or a zipper foot, really. And they allow you to have your needle right at the edge of the foot. And they're very narrow, which I absolutely love because it allows me, again, to keep press uh, foot pressure even, even when working on, for example, close to interfacing uh, when you're sewing a bag together, for example, and you want to get right up next to the interfacing, but stay off it. But at the same time, keeping the presser foot pressure. As if I would have tried to sew this seam with, for example, the standard foot, it would not allow me to go as close to the interfacing as I would like. And if I would go close to the interfacing, the presser foot would lean which would create an uneven pressure foot pressure and that gives us a seam that's not as tight as we would like 
making when you turn your bag you will get that gaping look between your seams and that we really want to avoid when bag making so that's why I absolutely love this presser foot I have it in a left and a right version so depending on how I'm holding my bag I can always have a presser foot that works so this one is for sewing on this end and um, if I turn this around coming from this one I'll switch to this one and just come right up next to my interfacing here. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, this, let's see, this is the one I use the most since it, when it's installed, uh, will allow me to keep the bulk of the bag to the left on my needle, whereas I have my seam on the right where I have less space. So this is the one I use absolutely most and it is called P3. 6LN and LN stands for left needle so you have the needle on the left there. Uh, the right version where you have the needle on the right side of the presser foot is called the P36RN saying right needle. So these two I really recommend but if you're only going to buy one by the left needle one, since that's the one you'll be using most for bag making, as you want to try to keep the bulk to the left on your needle. Anyway, I have the same um, presser feet in a Teflon version again, and uh, I actually use this for uh, a bit of everything really. Uh, sometimes the backing of uh, a vinyl, for example, can be a bit sticky, um, like you know those that are backed with a bit of fuzz. Sometimes these uh, metal feet don't glide as well, so then I use these ones. And they are the same, one left and one right. And uh, they also will allow you to keep the pressure foot pressure even while staying really close to uh, an edge or an interfacing uh, <laughs> change of height, so to speak. And uh, again, if you're only going to buy one, buy the left needle one, I'd recommend. And these are called T36L for the left needle one, and the right needle one is called T36. These I also use for a bunch of top stitching, for example, as it allows me to see exactly where my seam is gonna be and stay, for example, close to an edge or, um, like if I wanted to sew a seam here, I see easily exactly where my seam is gonna go. So I find them quite convenient in that way. Okay. Uh, when I've spoken about those, uh, let's talk about some of my favorite, favorite feet, and that is my compensator feet. Let's take a look at the quarter inch one first. Uh, this is uh, the quarter inch uh, compensator foot, and it has this little compensator part here uh, that allows you to sew uh, next to something of varying heights, as it will compensate for the height difference while still allowing you that guide to sew next to an edge, for example. So if I, um, I have a pocket here, for example, um, <laughs> this is an open pocket, so I would want a stitch line here, uh, a top stitching line, and then I just leave this right next edge to edge and I get a perfect seam running straight down without any effort since the compensator will guide my fabric in a perfectly straight line. And uh, I absolutely love this. I use this a lot for my double stitch lines. And uh, this one is called the CR one quarter N. And uh, it's something I highly recommend, especially if you struggle with getting the top stitching right on your bags. And I also have the same foot, oh, that's not it. <laughs> I also have the, where did it go? The same foot there. Uh, the same foot in 1.5 millimeter. So that's a really narrow um, kind of uh, top stitch. And I use that for top stitching, for example, pockets like here. Um, I use it next to zippers. I use it a lot, a lot, a lot. So after these two, if I were to only buy the one, I would actually buy the 1.5 or maybe even a 2mm version, depending on your preferences. These are available in a bunch of widths. 
the 1.5 millimeter one was CR15 and these are super handy. I would love them in a Teflon version, but unfortunately I don't think they exist. Uh, at least I haven't been able to find them. If you have, let me know. <laughs> Uh, but these two feet are really, really handy. Actually, let me show you really quickly here because they are so convenient. I'm just going to pop that on and, uh, and uh, untangle my thread here and uh, lengthen my stitch a bit and uh, give this a whirl so you can see how pretty it comes out. So this is the quarter inch one. And I just guide... The, uh, the fabric gently towards the uh, compensator and uh, fine. And we have a very even stitch line and unfortunately I see that I have a much too um, big uh, needle so I get that kind of a little leaning look <laughs> on my stitch and I have a very very slim thread in my um, in my machine so this actually turned out looking horrible I'm very sorry but at least you can see that the distance to the edge is uh, the same throughout and I wish I had checked this before I started but you know anyway uh, uh, let me show you how big of a difference it is with the 1.5 millimeter one as well. I'm a super slow stitcher by the way, this is me going fast. There we go. And there you have the uh, 1.5 millimeter one. God, this looks awful. This thread is so thin. Anyway, <laughs> um, um, but you can see the distance from the, uh, the edge anyway. And it's a very narrow, but it comes out beautiful. If you have the right thread and the right needle in your machine, it will look beautiful. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, those are the pressed feet I use the most. As I was uh, finishing up my video, I realized I had forgotten to talk about two rather important things. And that is the <laughs> dual feed foot. I use this when I quilt bags and uh, it's invaluable because this uh, foot actually feeds your fabric from the top at the same time as the bottom. So it ensures you won't get any bubbles or uneven feed of the money layers when you're quilting. Um, so uh, one of these is really really handy and I highly recommend that you buy one if you're going to be quilting your bags or quilting quilts for all that matter. Uh, I also use it um, for some other applications uh, in bag making when there's many layers involved and I want to make sure I do feed all the layers evenly. Uh, one thing I did do with this though from after I purchased it is I hope you can see these uh, feet are rather sharp, as actually are the feeding feet here uh, on the machine. Um, actually, I'm going to take this off. Um, they are rather sharp, actually, and when you're working with uh, vinyls, for example, these feet can leave marks um, because sometimes you need the pressure foot pressure to be rather high when working with heavy layers in bags, for example. So. To prevent this, I have actually used, um, oh, I don't know the word in English, but it's uh, it's uh, this um, sandpaper that you use for metal. Uh, <laughs> I hope you know what I'm talking about. And I have just filed these very slightly just to round out the worst ridges uh, to make sure they don't make uh, marks or ruin my vinyl. And I have done the same for this, uh, so these. So I have actually sanded them down a slight, slight bit just to get rid of those sharpest, sharpest edges. They st it still feeds perfectly, as does my feed uh, dogs, uh, but it doesn't make those dents or walking marks in the fabric anymore. So that is something you might want to consider doing if you get one of your own before you use it on your best bag <laughs> or best vinyl. Uh, Anyway, another thing I want to talk to you about while I have you 
is the uh, magnetic seam guide. This is a little tool I use a lot uh, because it allows me, whoops, it is so strong this magnet, it escaped. Uh, because it allows me to use this as I would, for example, a compensator foot uh, to guide my fabric, but this one, uh, it is, um, it, I can move it, it has a big magnet, so it's super strong, it stays in place, even if I'm pushing heavy fabric towards it, so I can use it when I need weird or strange seam allowances that I don't have a specific uh, compensator foot for. So I use this a lot actually when I'm sewing uh, zippers, where you might need like um, a sixteenth of an inch more for, than this gives you, uh, then I can use this one. And I also use it for uh, stuff like um, <laughs> curtains actually, or uh, when I'm uh, sewing many other applications where I need a weird largest seam allowance that none of my feet can give me. Uh, and if you know me, you know I'm a perfectionist, so <laughs> everything needs to be perfect. And all these little tools really help me <laughs> make sewing enjoyable as they ensure that my seams will be very straight. And uh, they do allow me to go a little faster, but I'm still a very slow sewer. Um, so for example here, this would allow me to get another really straight seam here uh, next to these by just guiding this along the edge as I saw. And like I said, it's super strong. So even if you have like wrestling a big bag and top stitching it or whatever you're doing and using this guide, it will stay in place because it's super hard to get off. That's why you need this little thing. Um, if you're a quilter, there is also something else I want to talk to you about, otherwise you might want to stop listening now, because this is uh, quilter specific. And that is actually the uh, open toe uh, um, free motion quilting foot. And it exists in a special version that you can buy extra. And I have done that here, and that is the one that has the opening of the toe towards the left. So if I install this here, you see that the opening is facing that way. And that is because uh, this smart little machine can actually be turned 90 degrees to the left and then they, uh, this opening will be perfectly uh, facing me um, and uh, you can use this machine as a mid-arm machine because you have uh, another thing you can buy extra and it's an acrylic extension table that extends to this side here uh, to the back and to the front. So it will give you a lot of extra sewing space to the sides of the machine once you've turned it. And it gives you the feeling of quilting with the mid arm. You have so much space to the sides. It's absolutely brilliant. So if you are a quilter, uh, look into this uh, turned open toe foot because I'm so happy with this purchase. It's such a great little foot. I use it a lot, a lot. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have found this informative. If you have any questions whatsoever, you're most welcome to ask them in the comments. I'll be trying to help you in any way I can. Thank you so very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.